Hello and welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. My name is Keith Appleton and I've been very interested in model engineering since I was a child. It was only when I got into my 30s that I finally had enough money to buy a lathe and from then on I've spent many happy hours working with them. All plain turning lathes are basically the same. They all have the same components. This is my very own, very old Boxford lathe. It really does need a good coat of paint and one day I will get round to it. Having said that though, it works very well indeed and is very accurate. Here is a list of the components at the headstock end of the lathe and in the middle we have the saddle which traverses up and down the bed. The saddle holds the cross slide and the tool post and it has a lever to engage the lead screw which makes the saddle go from left to right or right to left depending on the setting of the tumbler gears. This is the tumbler control which makes the lead screw revolve in each direction. Here you see it in the forward direction, which will move the saddle towards the chuck if this lever is moved into the upright position. If I move the lever down again, that disengages it. Reverse the direction of the chuck, move the lever back up, and the saddle goes in the opposite direction. On the top of the saddle, on the cross slide, is a tool post, and the tool post holds the lathe tools. The lathe tools that I'm using in this video are replaceable tip tools. For tip tools to be really successful, you need a very rigid lathe, which is usually a large machine. Small model making lathes often are not rigid enough to support these tools, but these days they're much cheaper than they used to be, so it's not too bad really, and very convenient. Fitted as standard to lathes of this type is usually a four-way tool post like this one, and these allow very quick changing of tool types for different jobs. The thing about it, if you have four tools stuck in it, or even two like you see here, it's very easy to catch your hand on the tool that's not being used. It is essential that the tip of the tool is exactly at the centre height of the lathe, and to achieve this you will have to use some kind of a packing under the tool. Then test the centre height by putting a parallel centre in the lathe chuck and comparing the tip of the tool to the point of the centre. Take your time with this and get it right. It is essential that the lathe tool is exactly at the centre height of the lathe. If you have a new lathe or have recently moved your old one, the first thing to do is to make a test bar to verify that the lathe is cutting accurately. Fit a piece of bar in the three jaw chuck and then using a V tool, relieve the centre section so that you have two unturned portions at each end of the bar. Don't put too much pressure on here the high-pitched squeak you keep hearing is called chattering and this is very common on small lathes or any lathe where there's so much of the work protruding. Once the cutting tool has removed a section of metal from the middle of the work, leaving unturned areas at each end, without removing the bar from the chuck all you have to do is take a very fine cut over each of the end sections and then check them with a micrometer. They should be exactly the same. There will be more about the use of this important test bar in the next video. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful. 